Welcome to Kings River Life's Mystery Rats Maze podcast, where we share with you mystery short stories and first chapters of mystery novels read by local actors. This episode features the first chapter of Murder Gone Missing, a Southern California mystery by Lita Sedaris, read by local actor Casey Ballard. Published in April 2018 by Level Best Books, Murder Gone Missing is the second in the Southern California Mystery Series by Lita Sedaris. The first chapter opens with heroine and newly minted lawyer Corey Locke flexing her sleuthing skills so she doesn't get rusty. Even though she's the daughter of a late great P.I. and helped her dad solve cases, she's just about made up her mind to have nothing more to do with private investigation work. That is until her best friend, Michael, accidentally tampers with a crime scene, which could lead the cops to Michael instead of the real culprit. He turns to Corey for help. Will she or won't she? Chapter 1. Night Moves I cut the headlights and turned into Lenato Bay Road. Fog crept around the hilly street, clasping hands with the darkness. I could barely see more than a few feet ahead. I eased my foot off the accelerator and parked two houses away from my target. I slipped into sneakers stored in the back seat of my car, handy for walks on the Hermosa Beach Strand, under cover work, and kicking in doors, which I had yet to do, but there was always hope. I still wore my black pants and matching silk blouse for my day at the office. It would be easy to disappear into the night. There were six houses on the quiet cul-de-sac, and not a street lamp in sight. A cool breeze whipped my hair across my face as I tiptoed across the short cement driveway. I'd waltz in and out of the place in less than ten minutes. The sliding glass door in the family room never latched quite right and hadn't since I graduated high school nearly a decade ago. The slider sat on a small balcony, just low enough for an amateur gymnast like myself to climb up and over. The master bedroom was at the opposite end of the Spanish-style home, so the chances of being caught were nil. Plus, the occupant took her beauty sleep seriously. I edged toward the side of the garage and unlatched the tall wooden gate, leading to a trash area concealed by a six-foot-high stucco wall. In slow motion, I upended a plastic receptacle, climbed atop, and pulled myself onto the wall. I straightened, balancing like a tightrope walker, and leapt onto the side balcony, toes between slats, holding on to the wooden rail for dear life. My moves were awkward, but they got me there. I hoisted myself over the balustrade and landed in a huddle. I stood and grabbed the slider handle. I pulled it up and toward me, but the door wouldn't budge. Ugh! There was a trick to this, but what was it? Jiggling the handle? Pulling it down first? My ears perked. I crouched down low. A light tapping sound, faint at first, grew louder, closer. Footsteps. Someone was on the driveway. My mind fumbled over excuses for being on the balcony this time of night, but I didn't need any. The taps faded. Before I could stand, they grew loud again, and faster. They stopped close by. I held my breath. The gate to the trash enclosure creaked open. Months had gone by without my doing anything remotely resembling P.I. work. Until tonight, what were the odds a burglar would strike and use my means of entry? I heard mumblings and a male voice spitting out a rush of words. Pick up, pick up, where are you? A whisper rattled my side of the night. Who was he calling, a cohort? I lifted my eyes. I spied the intruder's head and shoulders in the enclosure. Dark waves of hair bristled in random directions. The light of his smartphone made his profile glow. I recognized the ski sloping nose and jumped to my feet. Michael! I whispered. He turned abruptly, dropped his phone, and stumbled, sending a trash can crashing to the ground. The light turned on in the house next door. A window slid open. Michael ducked, and so did I. A moment later, meows howled from the trash area, breaking the silence. I stifled a snicker. Michael did a fine impression of a soulful cat. Throaty meows grew louder, followed by a final meow at a higher pitch. 
The window slammed shut and the room went dark. We got to our feet at the same time. Don't you want to finish your song? I asked. I can't remember the rest of the words. He stared at me, hazel eyes open wide. His breath escaped in short bursts. I've been calling you all day, Corey. Why are you sneaking around your mom's house? I could ask you the same. In my case, it kept my breaking and entering skills from getting rusty. And she had something I needed. Something she didn't need to know about. What are you doing here? Looking for you. Everywhere. I went to your place, called your office, your cell. You didn't answer. It's on mute, I said. We spoke in fast whispers, playing catch-up to make sense of this odd rendezvous. Michael and I had been best friends since junior high. We'd spent a lot of quality time together lately, solving a homicide, but I hadn't heard from him in days. Don't you ever keep the ringer on? What if there's an emergency, like now? You okay? I asked him. He turned and eased out of the enclosure. He shut the gate and tiptoed closer until he stood below the balcony, head tilted back. I am not okay, he whispered, moonlight in his hair. I'm terrible. Beads of sweat splashed across his forehead. I'm worse than terrible. Hold on. I threw a leg over the balustrade and dropped to the ground. At six feet, he had a few inches on me. His face was pale, his mouth hung open, and his gray dress shirt clung to his skin. I'd never seen him so distressed. Wait a minute. This is serious. Talk to me. I'm not sure what happened. I marched into his office to tell him he was wrong. Michael spoke at an unnaturally high pitch. He was wrong. His next words shot out in a stream. It shouldn't have happened. I really messed things up. We gotta go. He grabbed my hand and turned to leave, but I stood firm. I looked up at the neighbor's window next door. No sign of life. Go where? I asked. Is there a problem at school? Michael was co-associate dean at a small private tech college in Los Angeles. I'll say there is. Today, President McTavish asked to see me, to tell me I was demoted, without explanation, to junior faculty advisor. Effective immediately. I was stunned and mad. I wanted to punch him in his... in his... Why would he demote you out of the blue? I inched toward the street, Michael by my side. Ever since I started this job, he's had it out for me. Of course, he has it out for everyone. He told me I was a weak, pathetic excuse of an associate dean who should never have gotten the job in the first place. How awful. I stormed off and wrote a letter of resignation. It was a good one, too. I poured out all my feelings. The demotion made zero sense. It, it wasn't right, Corey. It sure wasn't. Not with your know-how and credentials. Michael had been a computer science professor at a big-name private tech college on the East Coast before taking this job. My demotion makes Alice sole associate dean and leaves me out in the cold. Michael had mentioned Alice before and never in a flattering way. She's your co-dean? Was my co-dean. Ugh, I can't believe it. I went back to Mac's office later. He was sitting at his desk when I went in. I told him how I felt, got everything off my chest. Michael squeezed shut his eyes and flipped them open. But then I had to call a timeout. We'd reached the street. He refused to talk to you. Well, you could say that. He was dead. This reading of Murder Gone Missing was produced by Kings River Life and directed by Lori Lewis Ham. Murder Gone Missing is available for purchase. You can learn more about this book and others in the series on the author's website, litasideris.com. Check out Kings River Life Magazine's websites for more mystery, local theater, animal rescue, and so much more. kingsriverlife.com and krlnews.com. Now we'll be back next time with another mystery short story or mystery first chapter. Subscribe to our podcast to make sure you don't miss a single episode. And follow us on Twitter to keep up with everything KRL at Kings River Life. So until next time, this is your announcer, Jim Tuck, wishing you a life full of mystery.